Lisa Lamb's rising star in the Latin music world garnered her a Grammy nod in 1998. But behind the glamour, a toxic relationship threatened to destroy her. He would hit me and I would hit him. It was like we were boxers boxing at each other, you know? But it was just a very intense, very love-hate relationship. All through childhood, the love and attention Lisa craved from her father eluded her. His first love was getting drunk, going to the bars and, and drinking. And so that caused a big um, emptiness in me as his daughter. And then when he would come home, there would be such chaos. He would throw chairs at my mom, throw the table at her. You know, um, I would just try to get on top of her and try to protect her. But Lisa had no one to protect her the day her uncle lured her to a park and sexually abused her. When Lisa got home, she told her mom everything. Really, really scarred me really deeply, you know, as a 12-year-old. And <clears throat> the hard part of all of it was, once we started talking about it with the family, my dad decided that he didn't believe me. You know, he thought I was making it up. Lisa escaped those painful memories every time she performed on stage first in school plays and pageants, then as the lead singer of a local Tejano music band. And I thought, you know, this is gonna be a way to win my dad over so he could see that, you know, I can sing just like him, and then also become this big star where I can take my, my whole family and just give him a whole different life. Lisa pursued success at any cost. The only way I was gonna get my career started was if I was involved with someone that was already had a name and was already established. I was going to use anyone and in any way to get what I wanted. She saw her chance when she opened for a popular Latin singer and record producer named Alex Montez. My first impression of Lisa was like, wow, the voice, the look, I mean, she's got the whole package. Alex produced her first demo. Soon after, Lisa landed a record deal and released her first album, Yo Quiero Soñar. BMG pushed the album and the album did really, really well. And we got gigs and tours and we started doing, got on the road and then started doing the career. I mean, it happened so fast. You know, here you are wanting it so badly, you know, and then boom, it's right there and everything starts happening so, so fast. Meanwhile, Alex and Lisa's relationship went from professional to romantic to volatile. He had multiple, you know, ladies in his life. He's a rock star, touring everywhere. And so I felt very threatened. I was so messed up and with so many different things. There was already drugs going on, alcohol. I used to see my violence towards her when I hit her as uh, like she provoked me, you know, to do it. Uh, but there was really something greater, darker working inside of me. It ended because I made the decision to leave. I couldn't do it anymore. Lisa refocused and went to work on her second album, Destino. She used cocaine to numb her pain over the breakup. It was an escape for me, and it was easy to get. When I was at the clubs and I would, you know, be high, I would remember um, and being in the bathroom stalls with my hands against the walls and just like, what am I doing? You know, how did I get here? One day, a couple of old friends invited Lisa out to eat. It was Alex's brother and sister-in-law. They were very interested in how I was doing. And then he started talking to me about the love of Jesus. He started speaking to me about the forgiveness that he has. And I said, I need that, you know? I was hurt as a child, hurt as, an, as a teenager and an adult, and I don't want to live like this anymore. And he grabs me by my hands, and he starts praying with me and says, just repeat after me if you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. And I did, and it was amazing because at that moment, I prayed, and I instantly felt like just hit Jesus' arms embraced me and just completely received me, and everything was turned around after that. <laughs> Lisa was determined to leave her old life behind. One day I was reading the Bible, and uh, there was a scripture that stuck out to me that, you know, I couldn't live a double life, and so I, I prayed, and I asked God, help me. Lisa met with the record label and decided to walk away from a $2.5 million record deal. Around the same time, she says Jesus healed her drug addiction and her broken heart. I was really able to understand to forgive the men that had hurt me in my life. Including Alex. When Lisa learned he had also become a Christian, they slowly built a friendship. 
Now, after 14 years of marriage, they pastor a church together in Angleton, Texas. Now, just, you know, having the incredible joy of her being my wife with the blessing of the Lord and of her parents and my family. I mean, God is amazing. I, I, I feel complete. And he's a great dad to his kids and um, a great husband. We were headed for disaster and the Lord stepped in and only God can do those things, you know, and uh, we're very, very grateful and very humble to the Lord. The couple recently returned to the studio to record a new project, Renew Me, in English and in Spanish. Whenever Lisa gets the chance, she shares the love and healing she's found in Christ through music. Freedom completely comes, you know, when you say the name of Jesus, you know, and receive Him, freedom in every area. So He is my lifeline. He is my protector. He is my, the father that I've always wanted. 